uh, deal with this as far as from the legal aspect uh, of the uh, of the government and for review and so forth. And he said, well, there were only like I think three men that you know deal with a lot of this, these issues, and that really you know there wasn't anything that they could do. And I wanted I tried to see the congressmen and senators from the state of Oklahoma. None of them would see me or talk to me. And the only person that would talk to me was um, um, was James Traffickant. And I did meet in his office. I met his assistant. And at that time, he had requested from GSA all of their files. And um, the um, FBI had come to him and told them that uh, they wanted to go through the all of the files that he had to um, white out various things that would be incriminating, and he told them they didn't have the authority to do that, And uh, but he would give them one day, and they said, because he said they would not be able to do that, and his assistant told me that they had threatened James Traffickant and said, we will get you for this. You know, we're going, we're going to get you over there. And it's now been declassified that the current attorney general... Uh, back at the time was the deputy, and the, the memos have been released in his emails where he said, we've got to have a full court press. This is like D-Day. We've, we've got to get down to Oklahoma City. Uh, this is on the 16th, and cover this up, or, or it's over for us. And we can even pull those emails up. I've read them on air. And so that clearly shows they were going into congressman's office and saying, you shut your mouth. There's so much to talk to you about, uh, Jane Graham. Uh, expanding on this, what about your your run-ins with Tim McVeigh in the weeks before the uh, Alfred B. Murrow building was blown out from under you? Yes, yes, he was he was there. He um, he was there a number of times uh, going up. As I said, he went to the sixth floor. Uh, I think he even went to the fifth floor and certainly the ninth floor. He had gone up there, um, and I really thought uh, that he was. Uh, with the military units there and, and going in to report or up on the ninth floor, they had ATF and other, other, uh, operations up there. And I thought, well, whatever he's doing, he's new and he's just, you know, reporting in as to whatever he needed to do. And, uh, the comment I made about his not talking was the fact that, uh, uh, everybody in that building would always be very, um, pleasant and always friendly and hi, how are you? You know, regardless if you didn't know them, they spoke and he absolutely would just look straight ahead, totally military. And also, one of the things most people do not know is that um, uh, the uh, bomb squad had parked across in the church parking lot that morning and had their dogs out. And uh, I, one of the postal workers, a friend of mine that went with me to Washington several times, she had seen them out. She was told, her job was threatened, she was told, do not discuss this with anybody. And uh, she went to the union in regards to that issue and got that was taken care of relatively quickly. Um, but... Um, it was uh, important because when I was went up to the seventh floor, the I ran into uh, Trish Nix, who was killed in the bombing, and she said, "Have you seen the um, a bomb squad?" And I said, "No, I haven't." And she said, "Well, they've been in the building." So it, I knew right then that there was something going on. And of course, like I said uh, earlier, in two weeks before that, when I was in the coffee shop. Uh, I was sitting at a booth, and right next to me uh, on the other booth was another lady talking to a friend of hers, telling her that she had called a friend who worked at uh, the FBI office at 5010 Place, and that to her, uh, this friend had received a fax stating that there was going to be a bombing in the federal building, and I was very, and that not to, and she gave it to her supervisor, and he said, don't worry about it, we know about it already. And I was concerned because my at that time, daughter-in-law had been working at Valiance, which is in 50 Penn Place, and I said, oh, my God, surely, when I came home, I said, surely they're not someone is going to try and bomb 50 Penn Place. Of course, that's where FBI was. And I thought, all those people, you know, are there. They have nothing to do with the government. And uh, Well, Jane, let me back you up on this, because some of this has come out in newspapers, but I have an employee whose dad was working in a federal building in Dallas, 
and they got that fax the day before that a federal building was going to be blown up. Uh, and then I know someone separately who was working in a federal building at the time on the West Coast who remembers those faxes coming in. And it's even come out in the news that there were some warnings. Uh, but you've got McVeigh in the building. You've got all these guys running around. Going back from some of your earlier video testimony, and I haven't seen it in years, but am I correct in saying you didn't just see wiring? You saw gray sticks of butter? I, I, I didn't know what it was at the time. I just I saw it looked like putty. And I thought, uh, I, I, you know, I just thought I didn't know what it was until someone told me, oh, no, that's C4. That's what that looks like. Now, who had the blocks of gray, gray putty? So those were the two. That was the man that was with the, the gentleman uh, who was holding the plans in the building. And so, and so you're walking by these guys, and you, you've never seen these maintenance crews, but they're there with wires and gray putty. No, no, no. No, no, not the two maintenance men. This is separate. This is a, these other three men were entirely different men. I would I would have I would have bet money on the two being military, absolutely military. The other one uh, who I later identified was at Strassmeyer, but those three were different than than. Uh, uh, okay, hold on. We've got a final segment. It's clear we're gonna have to get you up again and, and really debrief you on all this. Well, here's the headline. Murrow bombing survivor says feds involved in blasts that killed 168 in 1995. And it's chilling. I was talking to Jane Graham during the break, and I said, do you see the same propaganda? Clinton saying, I hope there doesn't have to be a terror attack to make the Tea Party shut up. Where do you see this going? And what she said was chilling. Uh, but, but, but finish up. So it was Strassmeyer and the other two guys in the garage you saw with the gray sticks of putty or butter. Uh, now, uh, specifically, where do you think this is all going? Who do you think from the evidence was behind this? There are several things. First of all, the ATF that morning, and I think people need to understand, that morning before the bombing, there were two men dressed with ATF raid jackets on talking to a third gentleman outside in front of the Murrow building that morning. And uh, I then found out you don't wear those unless there's something going down where they need to be recognizable immediately. That's the one. Strassmeyer and the other two gentlemen that were in the garage the Friday before, yes, what I saw them have, I was told that what they thought was the putty was in fact actually what was uh, I, I, I gave a description of, and I was told that's C4. And um, what I am saying is that if anyone goes back in history, history repeats itself always, but governments, of always one of the things they have done, they go in and they take care of, of creating an incident, creating a bombing or whatever, in order to come back in and fix it so that whatever has happened, they've got a solution of how they're going to fix the problem, whether it be they're going to say, well, the terrorists did it, we now have to have uh, additional protection, we need to have uh, blame it on the militia, we need to blame it on, um, we, we need to have a Patriot Act, we need gun control. What They've always got an agenda to take away rights and, and to sell it to the public in mass as we're protecting you, we're the good guys, we're taking care of you, we're protecting you. And I'm saying that this was done, they can claim, they can claim that they had no part in it because then they don't have any liability issues involved in it. And even though they were behind it and they, I imagine and feel very confident in that they, uh, they did uh, have McVeigh on their payroll. They did uh, uh, get uh, Strassmeyer out of the country with his luggage, with everything, a straight shot through, was told, I understand from others, they were, he's told, do not go through his uh, luggage, just give him a free pass to go back to Germany. Uh, there were other people who were involved, and money that came from uh, uh, the uh, Islam countries and uh, involved, and so they could, they could go from a very 
technical, big, big organization and having other people do their work through FBI, CIA, and then say, well, we don't know anything about it. Absolutely, we Jane. Somebody else. Jane, Oklahoma City bombing survivor. We're out of time. Uh, in closing, though, are you concerned seeing the same buildup of propaganda claiming domestic groups are going to attack again? Yes. The government's doing unpopular things. They need to play the part of the victim again. I see pre-programming for another Oklahoma City. Do you agree? Absolutely. I think they will do something. I really believe that it's not a bombing. I think it's going to be something that will have to do with water supplies or germ warfare of some sort. But they're going, they're, they're planning ahead to do something big in order to uh, blame the militias, blame the Tea Parties, because the American public is getting fed up with having their rights taken away, being taxed to death, and government is controlling everything.